Welcome to part two of our problem set. In the first part, we already proved that if G is a simple graph, then the number of edges it has is at most n choose two, and it will have n choose two edges when the graph is the complete graph. We also proved that every path is bipartite. We saw it with a couple of examples, and then we gave the full proof. So now we're ready to look at our next problem. For k equal to 0, 1, and 2, characterize the k regular graphs. For this problem, the key thing to remember is that a k regular graph is a graph in which every vertex has a degree k. So let's take a look at each of these one at a time. We're going to first look at k equals 0, and we need to characterize the graphs that are 0 regular. What we mean by characterize is to get an if and only if statement, so that we know that a graph is 0 regular if and only if some property. So let's take a look. When k equals 0, I know that all of my vertices have to have degree 0. So if I wanted to have a 0 regular graph on a single vertex, then this would be an example. A different example would be something like this, where I have two vertices, which also both have degree 0, and this is also an example of a 0 regular graph. In general, I could have any number of vertices that I like, as long as I don't put in any edges at all. So I could have n vertices and no edges. And we learned in a previous video what these graphs are called. They are called empty graphs, the graphs with no edges. So a graph is zero regular if and only if it is an empty graph. It should be pretty clear to see that an, any empty graph has to be zero regular. And also the other way, if it's zero regular, then it means that it cannot have any edges, so it must be an empty graph. Now let's take a look at k equals one. So we want to characterize the one regular graphs. Let's again start by thinking of a few examples. If I put down a single vertex, then I know it has to end up with degree one, which means I have to give it an edge. And we know that an edge has to have a second vertex attached to it. It has to have another end. So I can do that, and that would be an example of a one regular graph. What if I wanted to add any more vertices into my graph? Well, if I added another vertex, like this one over here, then I would not be able to adjoin it to either one of the previously existing vertices because that would increase their degree beyond one. So if I want to give it a neighbor, I have to be able to give it a different neighbor. And in fact, I have to give it a unique neighbor because it needs to have degree one. So I could continue to run this process. Anytime that I want to add in a new vertex, I have to add in a second vertex so that it can have this degree one and I can continue to put in any number of these that I want. Notice that each one of these pieces is k2, or the path on two vertices, depending on how you want to look at it. So a graph is one regular if and only if it is the disjoint union of a bunch of k2s, complete graphs on two vertices. If you're not familiar with the term disjoint union, just think of it as a collection of k2s. So here we have a particular k2 and then we have another k2 and we have them disjoint from each other. Again, it's easy to see that a collection of k2s is definitely one regular, and as we constructed it, we noticed that the only way to build a one regular graph is to have some collection of k2s. And that's exactly what gives us our characterization of these graphs. Now let's look at k equal to 2, so the degree of every vertex should have degree 2. Let's start by building an example. If we put in a single vertex, and then we say, well, it needs to have degree 2, we have to add two edges like this. And of course, they need to have end vertices. But the end vertices currently only have degree 1, so they need to also have another edge coming off of them. And you have to keep going. And eventually, come back around and form a cycle. So a cycle is a nice example of a two regular graph. But in general, if you're looking for any two regular graph, not necessarily connected, it could have any number of cycles in that graph. So this graph in red here, which consists of a three cycle and a four cycle, is also an example of a two regular graph. This example in green of a six cycle and two three cycles is also an example of a two regular graph. So in general, to make a two regular graph, you can have any collection of cycles of any lengths. This gives us the characterization, a graph is too regular if and only if it is the disjoint 
union of cycles of any lengths. Now remember, this is any number of cycles, each one of them can have any length. And so now we've done it. We've characterized all the zero regular graphs, the one regular graphs, and the two regular graphs. For our next problem, let G be a bipartite graph with partite sets X and Y. Prove that the sum of the degrees of vertices V, where V is taken in X, is equal to the sum of the degrees of the vertices V, where V is taken from Y. Let's start by taking a look at a small example. Here I'm going to draw three vertices in one partite set and two in the other, and I'll call them X and Y, and I'll put in some edges. Notice that I've only put in bipartite edges, edges that go between the set X and the set Y. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at each vertex and I'm going to write down its degree in red. So this vertex has degree 1, this one has degree 2, and this one has degree 1. Over here I notice that these vertices have degree 3 and 1. So if I take a look at what this left hand side is telling me, it's telling me to sum up the degrees of the vertices in the graph where all the vertices are just taken from the set X. So what that means is this sum right here, summing up this 1, 2, and 1, and I get 4. This right hand side is telling me to sum up the degrees of the vertices V where V is taken from the partites at Y. So that's this sum right here. 3 plus 1 is also equal to 4. So for our little example, we can see that this is indeed true. That's not a proof though, so we have to think of a way to prove this in general. Now when I take a look at these sums, they look awfully familiar, because we've already seen that the sum of the degrees of all of the vertices in the whole graph is going to be equal to twice the number of edges. So I feel like looking at the number of edges is going to be important here. If I look at our little example and I count the number of edges, I'll see quickly that there are four edges. There's this one, this one, this one, and this one. So now that I've noticed that the number of edges is equal to four, this gives me a hint as to how to prove this little theorem. In order to prove that this red sum here is equal to this blue sum here, what I'm going to do is show that the red sum is in fact equal to the number of edges, and then I'm also going to show that the blue sum is equal to the number of edges. This is known as a general proof technique called counting in two ways. If you count the same thing, in this case number of edges, in two different ways, then the two different ways you got must be equal because they're counting the same thing. So that's the entire idea of the proof. Let's write it out formally. The sum of the degrees of vertices V where V is in X is equal to the size of the edge set, since each edge that is incident with a vertex V in the set X has its other end in Y. So it's counted exactly once in the summation of the degrees of the vertices V where V is in X. Similarly, the sum of the degrees of vertices V where V is in Y is also equal to the size of the edge set. For the exact same reason, the other end of that edge is in the set X. So now that we've explained in general why this sum is counting the number of edges and why this sum is counting also the number of edges, we know that these two sums must be equal. And that completes the proof. Our last question is a true or false question. So we need to determine whether the following statement is true or false. If u, v, and w are vertices of a graph, and there is an even length path from u to v, and there's also an even length path from v to w, then there is an even length path from u to w. So first of all, you need to think whether or not you believe this statement. If you do believe the statement, then you need to find a proof for it. If you don't believe the statement, then you need to find a counterexample. A counterexample is an example that satisfies the conditions that are given and then does not satisfy the conclusion. A proof would in turn show that if any graph satisfied these two conditions, having an even length path from U to V as well as an even length path from V to W, then it would have to have an even length path from U to W. So think about it for a minute and decide for yourself if you think this is true or false. Okay, spoiler alert, I'm now going to tell you the answer. The answer is false. And because it's false, I need to present to you a counterexample. I'm going to start by making my graph with a vertex U, and I'm going to make it adjacent to my vertex W. 
So in particular, so far I've made it so that there isn't any even length path from U to W. But so far it's not a counterexample, I still need it to satisfy the original conditions. I need there to be an even length path from U to, D to V and also from V to W. So let me continue to build my graph. I'm going to put vertex V out here. And notice right now that there is indeed an even length path from U to V. It's this path right here of length 2. But there isn't yet an even length path from V to W, so I still have to build that. Well, there's no problem. I can continue to put on an edge to this vertex out here and now make it adjacent to W. And now I also have an even length path from V to W. I'll highlight it right here in orange. It goes from V to this other vertex and then to W. So we did satisfy that there is an even path from U to V. We've also satisfied that there's an even path from V to W, but there is no even path between U and W. You may be tempted to try to say that this is a path between U and W, going through W and then around this graph and coming back in, and claim that that has length 4, but that is not a path because a path cannot have repeated vertices. So this counterexample showed that this statement is false. I hope you enjoyed the first problem set in basic graph theory, and I'll see you next time.